Hey guys, Andrew here. Today I'm going to talk about the advantages of trust roofs and pitched roofs and why the tides have changed a bit and a lot of builders are actually starting to pitch their roofs on site. So as you can see on the here I actually have uh, at the moment it's a pitch roof and if you're not sure what a pitch roof is it's basically all these individual sticks of timber turn up on a truck and are cut by a carpenter on site majority of the time and it's kind of it, it, it's a, an art that's been lost because uh, there's a lot of work involved in figuring it all out and cutting it on site and you know with efficiency it made sense to have prefabricated frames however there's, the reason why pitched roofs are starting to come back in these days is because prefabricated products like trusses uh, and frames have up to a 16 week wait and that's really cutting into uh, builders profits and increasing overheads because having projects sitting there without roofs on them is you know kind of expensive. So this job was actually originally designed as a trust roof uh, but I'm going to turn it off and just show some things that may or may not be considered when people are deciding to go to a pitched roof or, or a hand cut frame uh, without actually knowing too much more about it. Now as you can see here we have all these red lines on the internal walls and if this project was a single level project on a concrete slab it wouldn't be such a big deal but the difference between a pitched roof and a trust roof is that trusses don't have an internal load bearing point when they usually up to about 16 meters which basically means that the external walls here and around the other side are holding all the weight which has advantages and disadvantages it's particularly when you look at situations like this with the trust roof you'll notice this red one here usually red signifies in plus design build that is holding more weight and it's on a big span so therefore that would probably need to turn to an, into a steel beam to hold that weight or the trust direction would have to turn another way also this being multi-unit development we actually have firewalls in between and and with a trust roof it isn't as easy to ensure a timber free fire break and the design would actually have to be changed to move it back into there or you know special considerations would have to be made however with a with a, uh, a pitched roof we wouldn't have that issue we can stop um, fire from spreading between two and I think a real advantage of a pitched roof is that if there is a mistake on site and there's either a plan error or something's gone wrong the pitching isn't working with the site constraints because of height planes or something like that a pitch roof basically can be cut and altered on site. Now I'm going to show you how to do this guys and it'll only take me two minutes at the end of the video so if you want to stick around to the end I'll give you a quick uh, look at how to do this because we can do this type of stuff in you know three or four minutes. Okay so let's take a bit deeper look into this and see if we can get inside here and have a quick look at, at what would actually happen and why it would happen uh, and some of what some of the member names are. So You'll notice we have uh, in this pitch roof we have these individual members that are coming from these beams. Now in Australia we call these beams um, uh, strutting beams uh, or under purlins, and a strutting beam would usually sit underneath our um, under purlin, and or it could be called a scissor strut or multiple different things. We have these ceiling hangers. Now basically what they do is these guys hold up the ceiling joist because. Trusses, I think one of the real advantages of trusses, and I'll get into that in a moment, is that they're self-supporting for the roof, but also for the ceiling. Uh, so we do have different things that are required. Uh, and we also have, uh, it's called a collar tie, which is basically tying the, the roof together at the top. Uh, we have a ridge, which is basically the center, center piece of the roof. And we have hips, okay? We also have valleys as well, right? There's a lot more working out to do in traditional methods and I think one of the main reasons we went away from pitching roofs is because the cost to pitch a roof or to work out the quantities of materials inside of a roof exactly was kind of difficult. However, we, we, as you know, we've developed technology that enables you to do this quickly and I'll show you that later. Um, let's go back and have a quick look at our, our truss roof and let's have a look at a truss by itself. Right. Here's a set of trusses here. Now, the advantage with the trusses is that it has the rafter and the bottom cord, which holds the ceiling, all in one. And if the trusses are run at a maximum spacing for our internal lining or our ceilings, 
essentially that makes it very, very efficient to install trusses. So, you know, something like this, you know, three guys on a day that's not windy could actually probably install all this hip end and all of these trusses in probably, probably before lunch. Uh, whereas to actually go back and do it with a, a pitched roof, uh, that would be a different story because, you know, first everything's got to be set up and usually what happens is we try and set out all of our hips, rafters and valleys and then we infill them bit by bit. So as you can imagine, that's going to be a slower process. However, most of this is repetitious. So all of these rafters are called common rafters. They're all the same. And usually what we try and do is we try and get a, a centering rafter or a crowned end rafter set up. And this roof isn't as easy to do that because our crowned end rafter doesn't hit our outside plates. A little bit geeky builder talk, but at the end of the day, this is how we pitch roofs. And we don't necessarily have to pitch roofs uh, all the whole job is pitch roof. Sometimes we might use trust roof as part of it and a hip roof as another part. I'm going to show you a project that I did, you know, probably 10 years ago. Uh, see if I can just find that for you. There it is here. Okay. So this particular house actually has trusses and it has a pitched roof. So you'll notice in the back section here, we actually have trusses. And the reason being that it was kind of, uh, this is a really large span between here and here. It was actually quicker uh, and more efficient. I don't really like using trusses when we have a whole heap of internal walls and you know we've got enough uh, load bearing capacity internally not to have to worry about free span trusses. I also find that trusses do flex because trusses are made with a slight camber to allow for the weight to drop. And if you're in a hurry and you're trying to get things done and the roof on and, and the internal lining's done and, and the ceiling's done, you can notice cracking. Uh, and trusses are more likely to crack the, the corners than what a pitch roof would be. So to have a look at this hybrid approach, uh, this particular job here, uh, let's see if we can go and just grab one truss here. Hide. Right, we have one truss, which is basically this comes in just like this ready to go. And basically we will stand them up on site, uh, we'll fix them down, uh, and then we'll go around and we'll put wind ties on them or triple grips and hold downs basically. And as I said before, there is a real benefit because this is free spanning. So I only need a support here and a support here. And the ceiling uh, and everything else is done for us in one go. But there's a substantially large amount of timber uh, involved in this. And at the moment with, with timber restrictions, we can't get enough of it. Uh, it costs more to not only just to supply the timber for the truss, it costs more to actually get it built off site. And it's taking a lot longer, as I mentioned earlier. Whereas with the pitch roof, uh, you'll see, you'll notice that, you know, a lot of this is all timber that we can basically turn up on a small truck. So, you know, basically every individual stick of timber would be cut, right? Uh, and that can all be stacked together really neatly without actually uh, the trucks bringing air. So we'll open space because we'll bring in packs of timber and then have it turn up on site. Then we'll cut it up which means that site constraints aren't as big a deal when we're going to use um, a pitch roof because all the timber is more compact. We don't need longer trucks, whereas the truss itself here uh, is quite long. It's going to need a big truck, a wide truck. Sometimes you'll have wide loads, and sometimes when the trusses are really big, you'll actually have to split them in two, which makes them dangerous to install. I find that installing trusses in a windy day or pitching a roof in a windy day, uh, I would definitely prefer to do a pitch, hand pitched, hand cut roof. Now, as far as aesthetics go, uh, or the finish of the project, you know what, you wouldn't notice if it was a trust roof or a pitched roof from the outside. Only the trained eye would probably pick it up. But, but it's in this particular instance here, we have exposed trusses, and that was more for effect and for a rake ceiling that we had inside of this project. However, you know, trusses on these larger spans here are a lot easier to install. Um, they're faster and they kind of look good too in certain instances. So depending on, you know, what the client's requiring and, you know, what is in the job, we may use a hybrid approach. And as you can see, that job's got a good example of a hybrid approach. Now, I mentioned at the start, I'm going to show you how to do this. And believe it or not, we can actually do it reasonably fast. Let's see if I can just open up a, a blank file, which I just imported some some plans basically. And these are just 2D, they're flat, there's nothing to them. But I'm gonna show you how to actually 
Um, I'll put some uh, trusses on over here and I'll put some a pitched roof here. All I'm going to do is select that face there. I'm going to go roof and I'm going to create a roof. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a roof at 25 degrees, concrete roof, and you know, uh, my rafter height is probably important and my batten or sheathing height is important. I'm going to go submit. Okay, and over here I'm going to do the same for my truss roof. Roof, uh, submit. Okay, so I have two roofs, the same materials. One's obviously a lot larger. And I'll pitch the harder one first because, you know, they call these things, believe it or not, bastard valleys uh, because they're not running at 45 degrees to anything. And I'll show you how to pitch this roof really quickly and how to view it. So all I've done is basically I've clicked inside of the roof, triple clicked it, right click, and I'm going to go to roof framing. I'm going to talk a little bit about the roof framing. Essentially, we have a rafter spacing and we can space our rafters further with a pitched roof and reduce the amount of timber involved because our roof battens can take more weight if we use a larger batten and it does save uh, time and material. And our ceiling is also disconnected from a pitched roof. I can explain that later if you need. Um, so we've got our rafter spaces. I'm going to go at 600 centers and I'm going to put in under purlins according to my rafter size. Now I can choose my rafter size down here and you'll notice when I drew the roof before I, I allowed for 90 mil or 4 inches above my pitching point. Um, but at the end of the day I'm not going to get too caught up. These are the materials I'm going to use and we can, uh, if you've got any questions, ask them below and we can explain why we put those particular spans in. But this is something that, that most people could do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just create some scenes here. And what this is going to allow me to do is just have a quick look at what we've done. Right. Okay, so let's look at our rafters just to start. So what this actually did when I when I put this in, it put in all of my hips and, and valleys and I'll just have a quick look. Right, it set out the whole job. We can also do a takeoff and it will give us the cut lengths of these that we would cut them on site and we could also get the order lengths we would order from a supplier. Um, it also has in here uh, rafters and battens. Now I'm not sure if I actually put in, um, I didn't, under purlins. I'm going to quickly just select that roof again, uh, go outside of it, select it and then go in and put in some under purlins as well and I'll explain what they do. Right under purlins here. You'll notice that we have this purlin mid-span of the rafter. And what this does is that this size of lumber will only span a certain distance. And what we need to do is support it at sizes so that we can actually support or these loads are going to be transferred through to the ground. And that would be called a strut. However, on the other uh, roof that we've got here, uh, we're just gonna go to trusses here. I haven't drawn any trusses just yet. So therefore what I'll do is I'll just go back to all. Now I'm just going to hide my roof for a second or I'm going to hide. And you can see that I have two spans here, a shorter span and a larger span. So with trusses, all we would really do is we'd select the truss, we would select our pitch uh, and what type of truss it's going to be. And essentially what we would do, we would uh, basically go and draw our trusses. So go here, this is the span of the truss. I'm gonna come down here and I've gone to the half span there. You'll notice it went blue. And I'm gonna quickly put these trusses in. And the same thing would happen from the other side. Uh, so I'll go here, to there, and to here. All right, and all this is basically doing is creating trusses. They're not engineered guys. Usually uh, there are companies like Prider or MyTech that actually go through and have to engineer this. This is one restriction with trusses as well. Uh, is that they actually, a typical carpenter in Australia can't actually go through and do it. So I'm going to go through here and, and this particular one, it actually needs to line up with the outside of our plate here. So I'm just going to click here for a second and you'll notice what happens. It's going to go through and put in a red truss. So we have a girder truss. Now point loads, which I mentioned earlier, are actually kind of restrictive in some instances because we have an excessive amount of load. So the architect in some cases needs to consider uh, that, that we couldn't have a large window under here, underneath here because what would happen would be that we would actually uh, have you know, uh, issues and costs associated with the engineering. Let's quickly get rid of these tails here. 
right? So basically all the weight of this part of the roof and this part of the roof is all going to load on one area. Whereas if we went back to say our pitch roof, all of the load is distributed pretty evenly throughout the whole project. So it means that it gives a little bit more flexibility uh, for the size of windows that we can use and so on. Now, for us at Plus Design Build and Plus Spec, we don't really mind whichever you use, whatever suits the project, but understanding why I think will help you out a lot. At this day and age, at this stage in time, with material shortages, labor shortages, I toss up, but the, as I said before, if it's a, 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 a single level project on concrete floor, I would definitely consider using a pitch roof. It's faster, there's less material required, there's better availability at the moment, and you can do it very, very quick, quickly with Plus Design Build, including an estimate and a cut list for on-site. You can also send these drawings that I drew there to your subcontractors, and you can basically get a high quality finish. Less downtime, less people sitting at home waiting for materials to turn up because you can get more done in less time. And that's our motto over here at Ruby Sketch and Plus Design Build with the new, these new features. It'll enable you to get your job more, done more efficiently uh, and essentially enable the project to run quicker and to make you or help you make more money. All right, guys, if you've got any questions, ask them below. If you'd like a one-on-one -on -one demo, you can book in a one-on-one -on -one demo at PlusSpec if you go to the Plus Design Build page. All right, guys, hope it helps. Cheers.